What's up? I'm Mike Ciprari. I'm Stevie Aiello, MD and guitarist for 30 Seconds to Mars. And this is Loyal to the Craft. Tomo, who was the guitarist of 30 Seconds to Mars at the time, walked in at the end. And the next day I got a call. They said, do you want to come rehearse and play bass for 30 Seconds? I'm convinced that most of the worst songs I've ever written were just written by me. There's one thing to get a no, and there's another thing to get like, F you. I need an enemy so I can go out there and like fight for something. F those motherfuckers. <laughs> I'm so excited that you're here. And like <clears throat> when I ran into you a few years back, yeah. you know, when Monty played the show mm -hmm. and Justin hit me up, Yo, you want to play marching drums for it? And I was like, yes, I was so stoked <laughs> to do that. Hell but yeah. obviously to connect with you guys again, like yeah. I've known you for so long. I've been so fortunate to work with Justin. Justin was like literally the first band like that SJC built drums so for. So crazy, dude. Crazy. crazy. And like, I knew you guys since 1998 when you formed yeah. Monty's Fan Club. Dude. And, and you guys oh were God. like the hometown heroes for me. Like <laughs> seeing you then eventually on the Ernie Ball stage at Warp Tour, oh, yeah, which yeah. seemed yeah. untouchable to get on. Crazy. You guys were on it and Nuts. you're from a town near me. And I was a kid of like small town, Dudley, Massachusetts. And I was Dudley. definitely like the, man, my town's so small, it sucks. I'm never gonna be able to get out of it in that mentality. But sure. seeing you guys do what you did and you had such longevity with the band and all you stayed together like the same dudes through yeah, the yeah. whole thing for sure that's so special i want to talk about that i want to yeah. talk about the early days of that career and how it evolved into where you are now obviously the great things that you're working on and through that like the lens of young stevie yeah, yeah, yeah. young me like, <laughs> yeah. you know because we're so fortunate to be in the positions we are and it's obviously come at a little bit of a cost mentally sure. and all the things we were yeah. just talking about but like you know, putting yourself in that lens when you were a kid, what have you learned now? You know, I want to get into like the, the sure. trials and tribulations of like your life. So thank you for being here. I'm yeah, so dude. stoked to chat with you and like get to know you more and oh, hopefully be able to give some motivating and inspiring key pieces of advice for, you know, the next generation of musicians and creators. Yeah, I love it, dude. And thank you for having me, by the way, for and sure. inviting me, because this is, that's like a really special thing. Like, I, I could probably cry at any moment right awesome, now. So dude, that's, that's really, amazing. you said some awesome things, so I really appreciate it. Oh, and of like, course, man. It's cool just to, the, the longer I feel like we stay in this thing, the you know, you feel like really like grateful, yeah. you know, that like you can see your buddies that you've been doing this with for a long time. Yeah. And like, we're still in, I just literally on the way over here, I ran into Adam from story of the year who I've known forever. Yeah. And he gave Mo he gave Monty like so many opportunities yeah. coming up. So like I literally walked out of, out of the hotel and he was just standing there Insane. and it's like, it's just something nice about that um, camaraderie and like, mm. just, I don't know. We're all trying to do it. We're trying yeah. to do it, you know? So yeah. So walk, let's start at the beginning. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Early days. <clears throat> what made you get into music and wanted to be in this crazy world that we're in now? Like in yeah. what through that, if you can, who were some of the people that inspired you that may have potentially either become mentors directly or sure. that you watched like through the early days of your career of like, this is kind of what I want to do and I'm guiding and I'm getting creativity from that person. Yeah, for sure. So I, I think one of the things it's kind of funny. I think my dad told me when, when I was young, he was like, you know, I picked up the trumpet or maybe the guitar. And like, he's like, I was always upset that I never like saw it through. And I was mm. like, oh, I'll carry the torch. You know, I'm like yeah. eight years old. I was like, I'll do that. Sure. Why not? <laughs> but so th something about that. And I, I should probably go to therapy for that and find <laughs> out what that was. But like, yeah. I did feel like a responsibility almost, but the fact that it was like kind of a cool thing also made it more fun. Yeah. Right. So I got into playing the trumpet, which was cool, but super limiting because you could only learn classical music so long without accompaniment and all this other mm. stuff. And there's no like, it's not like guitar where you can just start like, play, you could play your favorite songs on trumpet, but what the hell, Who's <laughs> who has favorite songs on yeah. trumpet when you're just learning classical music, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So I think I like pivoted into guitar when I was probably like 12 years old. And I just so happened the year later to meet this really close friend of mine. His name is Joe Rulo. And he basically was like, my family was very strict you know, my dad was in the military. Everything was just like straight laced. Mm. And he was like, oh man, like we should like, we should like leave the house at 3 a.m. and walk to Laura Didi's house, you know, like shit yeah. like that. And he was really into music, obsessed with music. So we were able to go into his basement and just like play all the time. Cool. And you know, it was just, that was like the, 
just it like broke me wide open basically yeah, yeah. he was the he was the one that broke me into all this started showing me all different kinds of music i remember he introduced me to um fleetwood mac and he we watched the dance which i think was like the dvd they put yeah. out at the time of a live show amazing and i was just like we were just on loop dude just like watch it like and yeah. you know that was like old for us back then for sure but there was something about seeing them just ripping on yeah. i was just like this is incredible and um, that was sort of the beginning of it all. And then, you know, I started to getting into like sort of like, I mean, I was always into Metallica yep. from like the Black Album stuff, seeing them on stage in front of like a million people in like Russia somewhere. You're like, dude, yeah, crazy. we're doing that. And in fact, like I have a cuff because of James Hetfield. I wear all black because of James Hetfield. Awesome. Like just, you know, the look of that yes. was just so dope. Um, so seeing people on stage, um, and then playing those songs in my room, you start to visualize what it would be like to be on stage or write these songs. Or sometimes I would even tell myself I I, I wrote that song. Like I did <laughs> yeah. not write track ten on the Black Album, okay? Like, but I told some of my friends I was like, yeah, I did that. You know, yeah, you're awesome. just like in your own little weird world, you yeah. know. And um, just imagining what it would be like in this in this space. And then that's kind of where like I started getting into more of like the punk rock stuff and like the Goldfinger stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, it, you know, even into like the more ska stuff, Blink, Green Day, yeah. Nirvana was a huge influence. But like, yeah, the, the, the more, the kind of stuff we're hearing this weekend, yeah. you know, at when we were young. So Feldman was a big one that I was like, oh dude, John Feldman, he was, I remember, I loved Goldfinger so much and I would go see them all the time. Yeah. I would go see Real Big Fish all the time and the hippos i loved Dude, all those bands yes you know and and then when feldman did uh show off i think that was his first record i think so aside from goldfinger yeah I don't know. But I remember hearing that album. I was like, yeah. dude, the guy from Goldfinger did that record? Yes. I was like, I want to do that. Amazing. That's sick. Because he's like, he's producing them. It sounds awesome. Like, the songs are dope. And he's making his own shit. I'm like, that's fucking cool. So, can we swear on this? Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's fucking cool. So, <laughs> um, so he was one of the, he was really like the first. I yeah. think like the first, Amazing. the first one that like opened my eyes. And, um, and then later down the road, I got to meet Mitch Allen from SR71. And he, he had written, he, he came in to like produce one of the Monty R.I. Uh, records. Wow. And he was just so talented, awesome, but he instilled so much confidence in me too. Like the way he spoke to me was, I had direct, you know, um, conversations with him, of course. So like it was different than looking up to the Feldman who I hadn't met yeah, yet yeah. at that point but mitch was just like when you get signed this is what's going to happen and when you do this this is what's going to happen and yeah. make sure you watch out for this and i was like okay but he was yeah. like he wasn't like yeah if you guys get like right the language was he so gave important. you the confidence yes confidence will carry you 100 percent. if you have that confidence you can have that magnetic confidence eventually that the universe and the energetic yes things happen in this world man for That's sure like a thread that everybody i'm talking to on this is there's an element of that. Yes. Because not an ego. There's no, no ego. No, no, no. For sure not. It's a very, like, it's, I'm going to go go through the proper steps to get there, but when? Yeah. I think the thing, too, is, like, you always think as a kid, you're like, I'm going to, I can do this. I'm going to do this. But it's not until it's verified by an outside source yeah. um, that you think it's truly touchable. Yeah. I think that's the thing. Like, you can actually touch it. So with Mitch... You know, I must have been, I was probably like maybe 21 at the time. Yeah, somewhere around there, maybe 20. And just like hearing that from him, you're yeah. like, dude, okay, this guy's like, he, he hadn't even done what he's already done in his career now, which is like huge stuff. Mm -hmm. But even at that time, he had done a lot of great stuff. And I mean, he wrote a hit song at that point. Yeah. So it's like, okay, this guy knows what's up. Right. <laughs> um, so yeah, those those were like kind of the beginnings, the Matt Squires of the world who oh, man. we worked with. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, so those guys kind of like, but but specifically Feldman and Mitch because they were um, singers in their band. They yeah. wrote the songs and they were producing albums. Yeah. So that was like a big thing. Incredible, dude. What a, what a journey and opportunity, obviously, that you knew. Obviously, people can get put in different situations and might not know how to handle that. Yeah. Where that person would give you the confidence of like, he obviously saw something in you, in the band and your songwriting abilities and your, you know, musicality as a, as a musician and a person. Um, and I think that's so important and I'm so, so passionate and dedicated to try to provide 
mentorship and skills and just tidbits of information for the next generation. Sure, yeah. Because not every kid is fortunate enough to either have supportive parents that are going to help them figure it out Dude. or, you know, a supportive group around them. And you don't have to, if, if you don't have supportive parents, yeah, that sucks. But like, go find a group in, you know, like-minded people around you in town yes. or now on social media and find the right people. Cause it's obviously easy to get yeah. wrapped into the wrong thing oh, for sure. And just like the magnetic confidence that he gave you in those conversations you had, there's also the very equal reverse of that where oh like if you're around the wrong people that are making <laughs> you feel this big Dude, or like 100%. no you know that's really tough to like find and you have to have that self-awareness i think at an early age to be able to draw those people into your world yep dude matt squire and everything that he did and as a very early fan of music like seeing what he did was just like whoa like whatever that dude touches 100%. is awesome yeah and like i want to do that as a musician and like how for sure um and so really cool amazing way to like get into it and so yeah that's monty at that point was recording what record at like where is that in like your your 21 you know where is that in the band's kind of like career yeah i i feel like we had because you know we started in high school so like we had made like you know the a tiny little EP on a cassette. Dude. Yeah, that was like the yeah. first thing, and then you know we made a made an, a record, and then I think by that point it was, man, it's hard. I, I can't really remember. We had made a few. We made an EP up in Boston, so I think it was after that. So maybe two thousand, maybe it was two thousand three or two thousand four, maybe, mm. and it was for the Redshift, I think, yeah, which yeah. was the the another EP we had made. Yep, I. Th- I'm pretty sure on our own and Mitch had done two songs for that cool um, we had a demo deal through maybe Atlantic man I can't even remember but yeah. Mitch was hired to basically produce two songs for us cool and um, then that became a uh, part of our first actual release on a label yeah eventually but yeah it was it was it I mean dude it was like I mean if you actually look at the time put in it was probably like five or six years into yep. our career yep. at that point, which is a kind of a long time. Yeah, but <laughs> the, the building blocks that you were you were kind of gathering for yourself for and sure. for the band at that time was so critical. And that's something yeah. that I've struggled with through my whole life in careers. Like as musicians, I have a kind of an obsessive personality where I see something and I want it and I'm yep. like, I want to get right to that. And I think yeah. a lot of creatives have that where it's like, I just want the end result now. I don't want to go through the process. Oh my God. May, whether it's six months, five years, it's going to take how long it's going to take. Right. Yeah. And like, it's hard to like skip the the flow of the, of the process. And if you Dude. do, you know, it still will come out and maybe work, but like, will it be as good? And will you be mentally ready for the next step? If you do try to skip those things, right? Like have no, you experienced 100%. any like hindsight, stuff like that at dude, all dude if i didn't have if i didn't have 10 plus years of being in monte ri there's no way i would be right for 30 seconds to mars yeah and i i talk i talk about this all the time if i go do like a college talk or something yeah i bring this up all the time because it's like um and we and we don't have to get to this now but like you know the the quote unquote like the the failures of our careers yeah like you could look at monte ri as a failure in one i look at it as a success some people yeah. might go oh you know I understand why like it didn't end up working out but it provided me all these tools yeah. and all this like just all this information and the way to talk to people and the way to approach things and then you know walking into 30 seconds it was literally the perfect like setup for it and if yeah. I didn't have that there's no way I would be doing this yeah it's just not just wouldn't happen 100% and I think that's the the do or die of like people have that mentality and I certainly yeah. do and have had it and it's heartbreaking where it's like you get a no from somebody. It's like, well, yeah. my life is over. I'm never going to be able to do this again. It's yeah. like, no, take that no, <laughs> learn from it. Yes. Try to garner some feedback from that person if you can, if they're For willing sure. to give it. Mm-hmm. Learn from it, go give it another go, and at the right time, approach that person again or a different person in the industry, whether For it's sure. an a person or a producer, whatever it may be. And yeah, from a from a fan's point of view, you know, Monty was a huge success. Everything you guys did was like the creativity, <laughs> awesome. the the <laughs> like – the musician musicianship, the showmanship that went into it, your shows were always incredible. Even as a kid, like seeing you guys in like two thousand, it's just like this to me, you know, I was I was a young kid from, you know, a small town. So going to shows. Yeah. Literally, dude. Do you remember the cappuccino jelly beans? Like all those dope ska bands Holy from our town? Sh- yeah, dude. Like going to those shows, <laughs> I thought that I was at a Goldfinger show. You yeah, know, yeah, but it was yeah, like yeah, just yeah. seeing a band, <laughs> yeah. seeing you guys at a right, VFW right. hall or whatever was yeah. like 
to me. Sick. And there's all those moments. So it's it's hard when you're in it, but it's easy when you're outside of it to see and be like, well, they're a successful band. Sure, yeah, you know, and I'm seeing 100%. these bands at VFW halls, and it's like to them, they're like, we made five dollars. Yeah, yeah. But to me, I'm like, they're rock stars. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. You know, and it, I think it, those lines get really blurred these days with social media and stuff like that because oh, yeah. it does look really easy to show yourself as a success but there's a lot that comes in before so you know like let's get into that what are some of those things that you really take now that were learning blocks i mean that was a great example you gave is like monty was 10 years of like practice to get you to the point you're at now yeah and who knows what will happen in five ten years for sure 100 percent. you produce a lot of bands which you know dude props like you're hustling and what you're doing is incredible the stuff the bands you've worked with like what are some of the, the trials and tribulations that you've seen that you call on those moments of like, okay, like 20 year old me or even 25, 30 year old me. Yeah. I I'm glad that happened because now I'm able to like, look at this with a different set of eyes. Yeah. I think it's interesting. Like I think just the whole Monty thing in general was, um, I don't know. I, you know, it's funny. I was trying to think if I would ever like do anything differently or like mm. y- there, there were certainly things that would have helped us that were out of my control. Um, it was a very democratic band, mm-hmm. you know, and um, which was great. But at the same time, it's like, hey, maybe we should all look similar on stage when we're when we're playing. I got you. <laughs> and not, I got you. Yeah. you know, like things like that. Yeah. Like I was always uh, uh, into... Um, I think uh, presenting a certain way, right. especially when we got signed and after that, because like, I'm not sure everyone understood, maybe they did, but like it's it, a lot of it has to do with um, inspiring the people in the building yeah. to go, hey, you're spending money on us. Like we're going to make sure we're going to like present ourselves a certain way yeah. to you and everyone else. Right. And, and some, we like, we didn't always, uh, you know, pay attention to that stuff. I I'm like, since those times, I've been hyper focused on it. And in fact, I can remember specifically, dude, moving to Los Angeles and not that this, this probably, I don't think it's about like looking a certain way and like faking it till you make it. But I do think like there's, there's something about presenting yourself and the psychological benefit to yourself. Yeah. Giving you confidence. For sure. You know, like feeling good about the way you look or the way you are present presenting yourself to somebody is really helpful. I yeah. think in so many ways that we don't see. Right. Um, and so I remember being in LA and Matt Squire was at the studio that Monte and I had did their last record at. And he had a close friend that I became very close friends with. And they both were like, come down to the studio. So I remember being like, oh man, I should, and they were with a bunch of musicians and writers. And I was like, I should probably look good. My wife was like, who can, dude, just go. It's Squire, like, it's fine. I'm like, no, I should probably just like dress up, dress a certain, you know, do the thing. Feel good. Feel good. I went down there, dude. And sure enough, Tomo, who was the guitarist of 30 Seconds to Mars at the time, walked in at the end. And he was like, oh, who's that dude? And I got introduced to him and he's like, and the next day I got a call. They said, do you want to come rehearse and play bass for 30 seconds? Not that that had anything to do with it, but I'm just saying like showing up for sure and being kind of prepared in some kind of way, you know, you know, if somebody can shred, which you can, but they present themselves where it's just like, okay, is that like how they roll? But you presented yourself in a way where you're like, I got my stuff together. I respect myself. I'm respecting the situation I'm walking into. I want to, you know, be respectful. I'm coming into this world for sure. And they probably noticed that of course. And was just like, can that dude play? Yeah. Well, he looks cool and like he can fit the part because it is. It's a, that's the whole. Yeah, it's, it's a, a performance, whole other part. Man. Yeah, it's for music, sure. but it's also like how you look. And obviously, like I've tapped into that with the drum world of like sure. I want the drums to add the, an element to what you're doing and how you're presenting your music in the new album cycle. I yep. don't want you to play a black kit. No. If you want a black kit, cool. Yeah. But it's like part of the production. If you want the production to be yeah. elevated, yeah. the people need to be a part of that, and that is a part of it. It's 100%. not everything, but how you carry yourself even down to like you said like just feeling good yeah you know and it's 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 not easy to do because yeah it's fun to just like lounge around but like if you present yourself with that again magnetic confidence like that will carry you for oh, sure 100 percent. i remember <laughs> dude this is so stupid but i remember i remember my wife when we were dating um if i took a shower at night i would I would put deodorant on and sometimes I would spray cologne on myself. Like, and she goes, so what are you doing? <laughs> like, what, why do you need to do that? Like, yeah. what is, are you going out later? I'm like, no, I'm just going to bed. She's yeah. like, why? I was like, I want to feel a certain way. Dude, man, like, it's I energy. Wanna, yeah, yeah, I want to. You, you, I, I, dude, I, 
had a kind of similar situation. I was in LA once and I was staying with a friend and woke up, had some gym shorts on. We just went and got like a loungy breakfast and I was just chilling. I was in gym shorts and like a long t-shirt and Trey from Green Day calls me. He's like, come into the studio, bro. Come say what's up. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm not like ready. Yeah. I'm like, I just woke up and he's like, no, nah, dude, just come by. He's like, we're at the Hurley studio. We're just chilling. Just come say hey. Dude. And I got wrapped into hanging out at the studio all day and then going to uh, A, you know that A's restaurant yeah, in Newport? Yeah. yeah. We went to that restaurant later and I'm like in gym shorts and like dude. felt like, you know, I felt not <laughs> the whole time. I'm just like, I shouldn't be here. Yeah. I already felt like that because it's Trey, you know? But then I was like, I'm not even like presenting how I am. Like right. people are probably like, who's that dude in gym shorts? Yeah, you know, what Trey, is he doing here? Right? Yeah. But like Trey didn't care, you know, it was of nothing. Course. But I yeah. know how that feels to be like, I wanna be ready. You wanna yeah. be ready for the call. For sure, um, yeah, 100%. And like if your mind and your energy is there, you're manifesting certain things like that for the universe to go, he's ready, he wants it, and you're putting it out there. For sure. And there's something to be said about that. No, for sure. I remember being in like Boy Scouts and like I, one of the mottos is always be prepared. Yeah. And I literally say that all the time dude, now because he, I'm like, yeah. always be ready, always Always be ready. ready. And especially with 30 Seconds to Mars, yes. I have to always be ready for the call because it could right. come at any moment. And yeah. it's like, let's go. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to, it's like, like so let's when you say that, like, keep your chops up, make sure you're just, for you're sure, in the, you're in the mindset and, and, and ready to roll. And it is definitely like, it's weird because it's, um, the mindset's an interesting thing because it is hard to sometimes, like, balance it all. Mm. Like, like, I take it. Like I like to enjoy everything, but I I take this shit so seriously. And people around me are, are I think a lot of times are like like the, the closest ones to me are like just chill the fuck out. But like <laughs> I, I it's hard for me to do that, dude. Yeah. Like even like there's been festivals, there's been even uh, our own our own shows, our own thirty second shows. Like I'm just if I have guests or something. Like it's hard for me to just completely let loose yeah. because I'm always thinking about the show and it's show day. Yeah. I remember even when Monty did the reunion show, dude, this shit's hilarious. Monty did the reunion. Monty R. I did a reunion show in 2019, 2020, yep. right before the pandemic. Yeah, January. We hadn't played in 10 years and we're not even a band anymore. And so we're in, we're in the uh, dressing rooms getting ready for the show. It's about an hour before and these people start walking in. And in the back of my head, I'm like, motherfucker. I'm <laughs> get like, the get the fuck. Here. We're about to go into battle. This is what I tell my wife all yeah, the time. Dude. Like, a guy doesn't go into battle, or, or, or a person doesn't go into battle and go, oh, maybe I'll just, like, I don't know, play video games or something. No, they get their mind prepared, their yes. body prepared, and they go in there and they destroy. Yes. And that's literally how I, it's so yeah. exaggerated, but that's how I look at it. Dude, no, you know? it's a good way. And I told you recently I played drums, like, live for the first time in so long. And, I, and I underestimated all of that. And it what you just said hit so hard because halfway through even practicing with them, I'm like, I'm out of my league right now. Like to, to say yes and do this, like was kind of silly of me, maybe a little bit more on the ego side. I should have not done this cause I'm not ready. Um, but you have to get so in that zone mentally. Yeah. And then obviously the physical aspect of like, you're running around playing an instrument and you got to be on, you have to be laser focused and you have to give yourself that time to mentally prepare. And I get it, dude, I've, I've, I'm always trying to be self-aware and like doing SJC stuff. I'm going to see bands. Like I'll go into the dressing room and later I'm like, I shouldn't have gone in there. I, <laughs> I was that guy a couple of times. And like, it was just like later on, I'd go and apologize to the band. I'm like, I'm sorry. Like I shouldn't have come and said, Hey, it's like, Oh, it's all good for sure. Yeah. But you really have to have that, that zone to get in. And especially yeah. in the world that you're in, I can imagine obviously walking in and playing for that band. Like there's obviously there's so, already yeah. a, a fundamental base of for sure. fans and music and everything. And you're obviously trying to like respect that and like add the, add the elements that you want to add yep. and like deliver what they need and what they're wanting from you. 100%. When I first started, it was all about executing. It was all about being ready for what was needed. Yeah. And like, it's interesting because again, going back to the Monty R.I. thing, I mean, I played lead guitar and I was a lead singer of Monty R.I. And then going into this, they were like, can you play bass and keys? And I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> like, and so it was so interesting because I was, um, how can I put this? Maybe I'll avoid that. But I, I, <laughs> I, I wanted to step into it doing the job justice and I'm just there as I'm hired to be there to play mm -hmm. and to look a certain way and do the thing. These guys have a history of like, first of all, two of them are brothers. Yeah. And then Tomo had been in the band for 15 years at that point. And it's just like, okay, that's like, I need to respect what they're doing. Like you said, and I just need to show up and play. And I remember dude, like 
when I got the call, it was like, learn these songs. And um, because I had never played keyboards before in a band, there was a lot of like side chain bass things going on. Yeah. And all I was told was your top camp was, uh, your top keyboard's your sample keyboard and the bottom one's your live VST. So I had to, no one told me anything else. So I had to imagine, okay, if there's like a side chain bass, womp, 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 I'm not gonna be playing that on keyboards. I'm just gonna be launching the sample on top. Right. So I had to like set up two keyboards in my room yeah. and like pretend like I knew what, like, Dude. and then like I had to go in there with the Ableton guy once I got the job and assign all the right notes to the sample key. It's like a whole thing. So I had Amazing. to go in preparing what could it be like? What are the variables in this situation? And yes. then luckily when I went into my first rehearsal, I asked if I could stay later than everyone else. So I stayed for five hours later. Amazing. No one was in there but me. And I just yeah. ran through like every song like a thousand times. So It's awesome advice too for anybody listening that is wanting to, or, or is at a point in their career where like maybe you're signed or you're getting into a band and, and filling in for somebody or whatever, like that mental preparation. It's like being an athlete. Yeah, you really are. Yeah. And you have to visualize. And I've been really lucky to like drum tech for bands and sit behind Cyrus from Newfound Glory and like see from his perspective and like, oh, wow, as a drummer, like I'm not going to be, you know, playing for Newfound Glory, but like seeing as a kid, oh, you're that's how you play that or that's yeah, how you did that. And right. like putting yourself in that position and just getting all the tools into your toolbox that you know you're going to need yep. and then visualizing what am I not thinking of? For sure. Like watching YouTube videos of like this is what could happen or yep. like. That's really important and like being prepared, I don't think can be understated enough or or, or, or or we can't talk about that enough almost where it's like, no, for sure. it's so important and music, it's a business, yeah. right? But like the creativity and the fun aspect of it can definitely, I think, outweigh the like, this isn't just a party, yeah, you dude. know? And like being prepared and always on and always ready because you never know, you might get an offer to play a show next week and it's like, they say yes, you gotta go. Yeah, for sure. You know? For sure. It's it, it's. It's crazy too, cause um, yeah, going back to what you were saying about just like visualizing and and being prepared, like I, I remember even um, well, first of all, the the best Monty R.I. show I think we ever did, especially the one it was one at home, and it was we just rehearsed so much mm -hmm. and we rehearsed every little detail like over and over and over again, and and with even lighting and everything, we just rehearsed so much and the show was great and I loved it and and I think with uh, with Mars like before talking about preparation and just working towards something i remember just even when my wife was out of the apartment this was like 10 years ago 12 years ago or whatever i would practice the songs in front of a mirror yeah and even like and i was like 20 something at the, this wasn't like when i was 14 this was right. like when i was 20, yeah. but it was for a different reason this time it yeah. was like oh what is this going to what am i going to look like yeah playing bass what is this going to be like it sounds ridiculous no, but, but it's, it's like a, a putting yourself in the yes. in, in the zone and then even try dude this is crazy <laughs> literally when i tr when i get jackets for uh, stage jackets yeah. i have to i have to rehearse with them on right so you know what it feels like you know what imagine it feels going like. on stage the first time be like well that button is scratching my arm and i'm gonna bleed well dude i know this won't work because this bar is too heavy yeah so when, or we're over here so it lifts up and it'll hit the bass sometimes yeah. drumming. like it's it's stuff like that where you're like that's so dumb but like it's, it's just a tiny though. little yes. thing where it's like just the feel because the repetition yep. is what is so important and muscle i think memory development muscle memory dude and like just hammering it hammering it hammering it. and then also going what if x goes wrong yep. what if y goes wrong and then also go what happens you know if if something is different and you start to get nervous. Like, how are you gonna handle that? Exactly. It's like, literally, I would Dude. do uh, exercises for that yeah. stuff, you know? Because I'm sure when you're in your room, obviously, the adrenaline is different than when you're on stage. And when you're in your room doing that, your mind might wander, like, what am I gonna eat for dinner tonight? And then you find yourself like the song is done. Yep. And it's like, what if you did that on stage, actually? Right, exactly. If the adrenaline was off or something was just off, you need to be able to call your mind back immediately because right. there's no room for that. Like for sure, you got to be professional about it. And so, what is that like for you? Like you talked about, you know, um, different things that you'll do in in, in preparing. Yep. Obviously, the 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 practicing, staying late, and things like that. Mental health is a big part of this. Like sure. music industry, life, everything. You produce bands. Like, how do you balance that? Do you have any like tips and tricks of the trade that you've learned for? mental health and like staying in the zone if you get in a creative rut where you've got a band coming in and they're like you know it's yeah, like yeah. you got this amount of time they're expecting this out of you 
but there's just a rut. Like, do you have anything that you do that you can call on in those moments to just help yourself out of it? Because nerves and anxiety, Oh yeah. you obviously can call on that in certain regards where it like, will make some beautiful music and sure. some incredible things happen. But yeah. if you don't know how to use that tool, to, to get through that, like that can be scary. Like, have you For experienced sure. moments like that and oh, have yeah. anything in your toolbox? Dude, hundred percent. Like I think even sometimes now, like if I'm doing certain writing sessions, like depending on what it is, like you get a little nervous beforehand cause you want it to go well. Yeah. You want it's, but the thing I will say is that uh, songwriting in particular has prepared me a lot for this kind of stuff. Cause literally every day as a songwriter, you are trying out yeah. that is literally what you're doing. Yeah. And 99% of the time you get a no. So if you do that over the course of many years, at some point you're like, okay, we're just gonna throw it out there and see what happens. Like you get s such tough skin cause you're just like, eh, fuck it. Yeah, I love like, that. And also the thing is it doesn't make you less creative. It makes you more creative because you have no, you don't, you almost don't care anymore. Yeah. You're like, let's go on a ride, let's do it. Because when awesome. you're young, you're like, I need to get this. I need to prove to people that I can do this. I need to do that. Blah, blah. And then that like drives you can drive you crazy too yeah. but it drives you and then eventually you kind of get little things here and there little things little things yeah. so you start you start gaining confidence and then you start like believing in yourself a little bit more that's how i did it because i had a big transition between being in monte ri and then immediately switching over to i'm a songwriter yeah but i didn't feel like one because i didn't have a publishing deal and i wasn't considered really a songwriter at that point i wasn't i wasn't grinding it out like mm -hmm. every other songwriter in the world it took me two years to do that got my first publishing deal and then I kind of felt okay, you know, yeah. but as far as the like getting nose and dealing with it mentally, like it's awesome because I've been doing it my whole life. I've been getting nose. So it's That's like awesome. sick because yeah. it's like, it's, I, I mean, like n I always say this, I was never picked first for the basketball team. Yeah, yeah. You know, I just never was because I event, but I eventually got picked and that that's the thing. That's the thing. right. So I was never the best. I was never great out of the box ever at anything. And that is a, a, uh, a benefit for me. Yeah, dude, be the way the way that you position that to yourself, it can obviously be, be positioned the all, the other way and that can be heavy and hard. For and sure. I see kids out there now like drummers that play our stuff or right? musicians that I see on the on the internet that'll keep popping up. And they're trying so hard and I can see the frustration of just like, ugh. It's like, dude, no, keep going. Like, yeah, dude. He, it's not easy and you're not, not always going to be picked first. And if you are, like I've seen bands that did get quote unquote picked first. Sure. And boom, 18 years old, big record deal, buses, big arena tour. And then like a year later, they're gone. Yeah, exactly. Because they don't have the thick skin and the, the tools in the toolbox to understand. And, you know, that's tough. That's yeah. also really tough. But like pick it up and go. And I've seen some of the coolest bands actually now after all those things come out from the ashes. I and love it's like, it. I love wow, it. you're so back sick. and like even better. And you learn from that. You know, it's incredible. So what are some of the most fun projects you've worked on? Like some of the sure. most creative, whether they got a yes or no, or like sure. saw the light of day, like what are some of the funnest things that you've done that creatively for you was like, wow, like I'm going places that I never thought I could. And this feels amazing. For sure. Side note, before I answer that question, yeah. I just want to make sure like I'm clear that, uh, it wasn't always easy to get through those things. Right. And, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm making it seem like a little bit more, uh, simple, simple than really, really mm. what it is. I mean, it was so hard, dude. It was like very, very hard going, especially when you're younger. Yeah, you know, and walking into rooms as a young songwriter, you're like, shit. Does anyone think I'm good? Right. Or do I suck? Like, how come this guy's so confident? Mm. Come to find out, like, it's because he's insecure, just as just as much yeah. as I am. He yeah. just he's dealing with it differently. Right. Um. So yeah, I just I, I it definitely wasn't easy. I have. I definitely can go down these paths of like getting upset or frustrated or whatever, but it usually lasts for a very short time. Yeah. I, I've, I, as I've gotten older, I've analyzed this because sometimes I'm like, I get so emotional being yeah. Italian again. You get so <laughs> emotional, upset, pissed, furious, ah, oh, sad. Oh, I'm never going to do this. I'm never going to do that. It lasts for about 15 minutes, mm. maybe a day sometimes, but then I, I turn it all around because I just have that. I, I don't, it, it's definitely helped me through my life because if I did not, if I wasn't the way I was, I know for sure I would struggle more. Yeah. But I have this thing in the back of my head. I think it's from playing too many video games or something when I was younger. But I was like, I will not get defeated. I yeah. will fucking destroy everything. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. like, so. Um, <laughs> well, no, dude, it's yeah. that, you know, again, you say we're, you're Italian, but also creative and driven. 
and those are the things minus being Italian that helps sometimes, you know, Italians <laughs> yeah. are cool. but like the, 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 the being driven with that fire and that passion and that desire to want something we've talked about it a lot so far, like developing that thick skin and turning those no's somehow into a yes or turning that no into a self-reflective moment of like, why was it a no? Could it have been better? Oh yeah, I'm glad they said no because I was able to tweak these things. For sure. No, it's not easy, but it seems like you've been able to through your entire career see it through that light and go, I'm not gonna let that get me down. And that's really important for people to hear because you're never gonna get to, you're in 30 Seconds to Mars now, you're producing all these bands, you're doing all these things that do seem easy and they seem like they come easy to you, but they're obviously not because you've gone through all those battles that you've developed that thick skin and you didn't give up sure and it's easy to give up and it's easy, so f- easy. to go oh, i have imposter syndrome and i shouldn't even be here like you said 100 like, well this dude oh my God. certainly seems cooler than me me going to my first nam show and exhibiting drums when i was like 20 years old dude people walk by and they're like who's this punk and i'm like right well i'm gonna take this and i'm gonna roll with it and you know i was confident in what we did but like maybe not externally because these people made me feel like <laughs> yeah. i shouldn't be there but i'm like yeah I should be here just as much as anybody else. And by the way, I yeah. paid to be here. It's Nam. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be here yeah, if right. I want, you know? Right. And like you try to turn that into a learning moment and a positive. So sure. I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. It's definitely not easy no, at all. It's and not it shouldn't easy. be. And it, should, and it shouldn't be. But that, that's another interesting point that you brought up, though. It, there's one thing to get a no, and there's another thing to get like a fuck you. <laughs> and the cool thing about a fuck you <laughs> is that you can harness that energy and sometimes yeah. anger oh, your dude. response and you can use it dude if i For need sure. to be motivated even to this day i can think back to a specific moment of shit talking <laughs> between some kind of like you know outside friend group and yeah. i'm like fuck those motherfuckers <laughs> i'm like i'm gonna fucking yes. do this you take that fuel and energy that's it. and turn it into something positive 100 percent. that's yeah. amazing yeah and that, dude that's what again it's almost like being an athlete i'm sure like football players lots of musicians we're all driven by certain things and taking yep. those like well my english teacher told me that i wasn't going to amount to anything exactly i'm going to show them yeah whether you're going to actually show them or not you take that and really turn it into a positive element that For sure. adds where it's like how'd you write that hook and it's like let me tell you yeah that day exactly. i was really reminiscing about so and so that wanted to you know whatever 100%. i didn't fight them but i turned it into this <laughs> yeah. and that isn't that like the beautiful thing partly about music and like expressing yourself, like that's being it. able to take that emotion and turn it into something great. For sure. hundred percent. You know? And that's what, when I watched the last dance, the Michael Jordan yeah. uh, doc, yeah. when he was like, when they were basically saying that he was creating enemies in his head, I like was like, Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Like I was like, yeah, I totally get that. Like yeah. even if, even if it wasn't real, he was like, I need an enemy so yeah. I can go out there and like fight for something. Yeah. Just, I love that crush. Yeah. I mean, it's not probably the healthiest thing all the time, <laughs> yeah. but like, there's definitely something to be said for, you know, there's something to be said for fighting for something. Yeah. And sometimes when I'm a little lost too, what I'll think about is all the, all the people in my family that like came before me mm. and what it took to get here. And even, even like coming from a small town, like how do you represent them? Yeah. You know, I want to like, it sounds so cocky and stupid, but it's like, no, I want to help put that on the map, on even the though map. there's been people from my hometown yeah. that have already put it on the map before right. me. And and there's, since, a, there's a sense of pride there. And like 100%. you said earlier with your dad, like you're kind of carrying that torch where like, it's yeah, like yeah. I'm doing this. This yeah. is my life. Yeah. And there's these pinch me moments for me anyway. And I'm sure for you, like, where it's like, oh yeah, like I am doing this. You're in the flow so constantly. It becomes the normal state where yeah. when you get upset, it's like, wait, for me, I'm like, I'm upset at like making drums. This is what I wanted. I know, dude. You know, that's, that's so, so hard. it sounds so stupid to even talk about, but it's like, it's such a real thing too, because it does become very normal for you. And, and, um, like the, <laughs> the shit that should be so exciting yeah. is just like annoying sometimes, Right. but then you really do have to, to, to get centered again. Yep. I, I, every time, um, we start like another album cycle or a new tour with Mars. I have to like, I'm doing it now. And this is what's so great about this weekend is that I'm reminded that like 14 year old me would be freaking out if I would knew I was playing this thing around all these amazing bands that I like grew up listening to. So for me, it's like, I have to always remind myself like, dude, be grateful. Like you're so lucky being in LA. It is very hard because you're always comparing yourself to other people. And that is the death of everybody. It's just, you you can't, everyone does it. We all do it. I'm not perfect. Certainly. But um, there's always going to be someone better, better looking, smarter. Right. Like so. Better writer. Whatever. Better writer. But like who, 
if you're so what like what is let me turn that into a question like yeah. what what is the definition of quote unquote making it or success for you like over the years of your life i'm sure there's been different phases of it sure in this phase of, of your life as you enter you know it sounds like a new album cycle getting ready and prepared for that mentally which creatively and all of that is an enormous That's challenge yeah. but also exciting yeah. new path and doorway to open for sure what does that look like for you like what's the check are there check boxes is it just the sense of being because you're right so many everybody does it we all compare and it's like all the way down to just anything well, yeah. why can't i have that why do yeah, they have right. that right and it doesn't matter at the end of the day like how do you put yourself in check with that and like what does that definition of success look and feel like for you man i it's it's so hard right now because my my brain is out of place. I feel like when I talk to people about this, this in particular, they think I'm f fucking crazy. But like, <laughs> like I've been saying this for a couple of years. I felt like this before in my life. I know I'm supposed to be doing something and I know it's like a bigger picture thing. Mm. And I don't know quite what it is just yet, mm. but I need to figure it out and I'm on the hunt to figure it out. So I'm trying to consume different things meaning like you know video uh, movies uh, business ideas mm. all everything because yeah. i'm i'm trying to get to the next step of success and i feel like it's more business oriented mm. because i've kind of uh, dove into more of the business side of things cool. in the last couple of years on the music side um and like acquisitions and all that kinds of kinds of right. stuff so i'm like I, i'm like really interested in that um just more business oriented and equal to the creative output that I'm that yeah. I'm having but I don't know what it is and like I'm on the journey right now to cool. figure it out cuz I I want to have a 10 year a 5 year a 10 year 3 year yes. a 1 year but like um yeah I'm 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 trying to figure that out right now but for me I think it's sharing my experience with 30 sec 30 seconds to Mars with my family mm. that's like a huge thing that's like a, a to me that's like checked box yeah. like i i, I want to bring more of that energy into the touring side of things like have cool. family out more yeah like have friends come out more that to me is definitely success because i'm doing what i love yeah. with people that i love so 100%. it's like it's awesome travel dude travel like showing your fam family and friends the world and like it's sick it's amazing it's 14 year old you i'm sure would have been like oh dude if i can have my wife and kids someday out on tour with me for a dude. few days like that is incredible it's insane i mean and, and as far as like the writing side of things there's definitely like i still feel like i haven't well i i for sure i have more work to do yeah. i have more work to do like more more things to achieve like i, I really want to start moving more into the uh pop and alternative worlds and start getting songs that like really mean something in that world and try to create yeah. copyrights in that world wow and that's like that's such a hard thing to do and like i just need so that's right now that's where i'm at like if i could check off some of that stuff yeah you know and kind of get more into that world i'd be i'd be happy amazing yeah dude and i think that everything we've talked about journey and thick skin and learning from moments and things like that it's really important i think to put that into perspective like people listening whatever it is business ideas music sports whatever somebody gave me advice when i was like 17 i called somebody in the music industry when I was like starting SJC and it was like, okay. what about this? What about this? And they were like, have a three, five, 10 year plan. Mm -hmm. And it seems so simple, but like <laughs> having the big goals that you can just actually have down on paper, there's something to be said about manifesting it and sure. it being there, but it's yeah. like out of my mind, I don't have to worry about forgetting it. Yes. A five year plan, a three year plan, which is still far out. And then the one year plan yeah. where you're just self checking yourself constantly. And, but also making sure that you're enjoying the journey. Like part of mine yeah. lately is just like, be present and enjoy the journey. Yeah. Because very quickly it, it moves on. Like yes. your kid's growing older and things are happening and you're like, oh wow, that all just happened. And I checked all those things off, but I wasn't 100% there to actually enjoy them. I'm already on to the next thing and it's really hard to do that. Um, but I'm stoked to hear about that and I hope that you're enjoying that journey and you can really take in all of those things because all of those things do add really key critical mo pieces and moments to that bigger picture right like it's all 100%. adding to it 100 percent, dude when so we played austin city limits last week and we were there for probably 10 days because we played both weekends and then a smaller show yeah. in the middle and when i got to austin i was like okay like i kind of was like I, I hate to say it but i was like yeah like we're gonna play tomorrow and it's like yeah I'm cool here. like yeah it's loud in austin cool yeah. like i got into that zone and i'm like what is happening Dude. and then as soon as we got on the festival grounds i was like it's a beautiful day to play a festival i was like Amazing, yeah. it's incredible here and i was like 
this is so dope. And then, you know, the day kind of progressed, saw some, some some friends that I know, and I was like, this is awesome. Cool. I was like, this is hanging out. And then we played the show, and I was like, fuck yeah. That's amazing. Dude, and it was I, did, just dope. I did the same thing yesterday flying into Vegas. I, was, I got here, and I was like, here we go. Gotta, yeah. <laughs> gotta do all the stuff and yeah. check all the boxes. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I literally just parked my car and like just journaled and wrote and like looked at the mountains. And I was like, you're in Las Vegas, like about Sick. to hang with friends and like see some shows and yeah. hang with your buds and like yeah. meet new people and be inspired creatively. Like what's wrong, you know? And it's, it's really crazy. hard to like pinch yourself and go, dude, slap yourself out of that. So that's- Our memories must be terrible because yeah. it's like, because we, we, sh we should really, just be remembering that this is just like the sickest shit of all time. And we should, it, I know it's just, we all get into these moments. There's nothing yeah, yeah. you can do about that. But the, dude, like talking about this is a therapeutic, I think, but important yeah. for people to hear because like we all get in these creative ruts. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. dude, 15 year old me flying to California for the first time, seeing a palm tree. That's what snapped me out of it yesterday. I saw a palm tree and I'm like, you would have freaked out about this 20 something years 100%, ago. hundred percent. You know, and now 100%. it's just like, well, there's a palm tree again. Like I want to go home. And it's like, no, don't it, it's, it's easy to get in those spots and it's normal, but like sure. find the tools to like quickly pinch yourself and get out of it like you did. Like For sure. it's a beautiful day. Like what am I gonna be mad about? Yeah, don't don't become that person. Yeah. Because that is the death of I think growth too. Yeah, and creativity. And Imagine if you played the show, the dudes I'm sure would have felt it. Like he's off. Yeah, for sure. You for know? sure. Oh, my, everyone came off stage and we were like, we were like, that was so fun. Amazing, and, and it should be fun. Yeah, for I'm glad sure. you said that. It yeah. should be fun. Uh, always. That's the only reason to do it. That's right. Like, that's the reason to it do this. It shouldn't be yeah. forced. And yeah, getting into those ruts and those like just typical grooves because life happens too. You for got, sure. You got a family. You got things. Things on your mind. For but sure. yeah, the 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 opportunities that are there should be fun and creative and you're inspiring people around you watching what you do and the music you create is evoking emotion yep that is obviously a heavy toll to, to have on the musician themselves but like having those pinch me moments of like dude enjoy this right now because it's not gonna last forever dude a hundred percent yeah that's the other thing too now getting a little older mm. that's been on my mind a lot because yeah. also like um jared and shannon are, are older than me yeah. By, by you know like 10 or 11 years and it's like it's just interesting like they could, by the way they'll go on forever and keep doing this I'm sure they like will, they maybe. will they just Seriously. have that and they look like they're 20 years old it's so sick. um but it, it i guess it's just i think having a kid you know like entering this new yeah. f phase after covid like it's just interesting because it's like yeah i don't know like i think now more than ever is a time to be really grateful yeah because it's like wh we're still here how, how long is this good like this yeah. can't go on forever maybe maybe it will i don't know maybe yeah. we'll be in the metaverse and everything will be cool like i don't know <laughs> yeah. but like but but yeah it's just yeah it's it's pretty it's pretty awesome it's in, good in the yeah. time the time that i think both of us have grown up in music we were kids and fans of goldfinger all these yeah. dope bands forming your band and like having the experiences that you did you guys did some insane tours like the Super stuff fun. you got to do and, and the boxes you get to check, so to speak, but like truly live and be in those moments. And now you're playing in a band at this level. You've done a lot of those things and producing on the back end and all that sort of stuff. It's such a crazy time. And obviously we don't know, like, you're right. Like, is it the metaverse that we're, <laughs> who actually knows? But yeah. like certainly the landscape of music and, you know, just, exploring things and like experiencing music and being inspired is definitely going to be different. You can look at it in a good way or a bad way, however For an sure. individual will look at it. But I think the years that we've had in this industry, 20 plus years now at this point, dude, it's, it's insane. crazy. The it's fact insane. that we're able to still be here and talk about this history is something special in of itself. And For sure. that, that era of music that we've been a part of is like really cool. Like there's literally, like you said, a festival, with all these bands of like the early 2000s and like it's through crazy. the two, you know, all of it past two decades is incredible to be a part of. And as a fan to see it is like, oh my God, wow, it's all still here. And like, it brings those memories back. And I, I feel very grateful to be here and like, even just talking about this Hell yeah. and inspired by your story of like, yeah, it's not always easy. People might see you on stage or a post on, on socials, but like, there's so much that goes into the preparing to get to that point to deliver what you want to deliver and what is expected of you for sure i mean it's yeah it's yeah man even now it's like it, it kind of never lets up too because there's always yeah. a new challenge 100 you know? and now the thing with the thing with 30 seconds too is um tomo left the band and 
2018. Um, so, you know, it, it, you know, the dynamics shift for sure. Um, but w it was interesting cause like, you know, I took on, uh, more responsibility. Um, and, uh, I had to be prepared for a whole other set of, of things, challenges, yeah. you know, which was great because like uh, hard, really, really hard, mm -hmm. but also like great because I got a new set of tools and I yeah. made mistakes, billion mistakes along the way. Right. Um, but yeah, right now is, is awesome. And yeah, I was just, I was just thinking, dude, you just reminded me that this is like, this is like a for real thing. Talk about visualizing. Sorry, it's kind of off topic, but I, I was, this for real happened hundred percent. I remember being in my room at 14. Maybe I made this up in my own head, but I remember being in my room at 14 and visualizing what it is like to be on the plane at night turning and landing in a city like Paris or Amsterdam or London, but it was a Friday night, meaning like end of the week. Yeah. Maybe we play a show on Saturday. Maybe, maybe it's not, maybe we have a day off on Saturday, but the <laughs> feeling of like, just like, um, cool, we can chill. And like, you know, yeah. no, we just, we're, we're landing in a, in a big city. And I remember a few years ago, we played a show we got on the plane, we went to like wh wherever it was, somewhere in Europe, mm. and it was a Friday night, and I remember turning, like the plane was about to land, dude. and I was like, I was like, it, it was like a weird, like, yeah, you shut up, dude. You your know? body like shifted. It was crazy, and again, maybe I was like making it up in my head, but I'm pretty sure I was, like I'm pretty sure this actually, like the, Unbelievable. the visualization happened yeah. when I was younger, and I remember going, holy shit, like it's definitely a Friday, right? Yeah. Everyone, like it's a Friday, right? Yeah. And And I remember being like, I was just so relaxed. I just remember being, it was like I was high or something. Yeah, yeah, you're super in the right weird. place at the right time or yeah. like you felt content. It was, it exactly, seems. that's what it was. I was just very content in the moment and I was like, oh shit, this is, this is supposed, this was supposed, supposed to, happen. to happen. This was supposed to happen. Dude, I've had sure. moments like that where it's like otherworldly, out of body experience and it's like, is there another parallel universe going on where I'm doing this and I've, or I've already done it? Yeah. But that feeling is like very gratifying where it's like, Yes, all the all the BS and stress and things that I go through to, to make this happen because it is a lot. Like for sure. By the way, the music industry is not just easy. You oh, don't just get up and play on <laughs> yeah. stage and like write hit songs. Yeah. and it just happens. No, it sucks. It's yeah. it's work and it's yeah. a lot of work. For sure. Is it is it a job to some? Yeah, maybe. But a job can be a shitty job, and you can just put it that way, or it can be a job that you truly love and you can express yourself. And those moments of like. I'm supposed to be here right now. Yeah. It's really cool. That's insane. That's such it's, a cool feeling that it's you weird, had. Man. And it's weird because like, I still can't really, um, I mean, it sounds a little, it sounds, this conversation sounds so douchey, but it's like, I, I, I sometimes think like, I'm definitely not the guy who's doing the thing mm. because I just like imposter syndrome a little For bit. Sure. Like it just feels weird sometimes where it's like, and I almost, I find myself doing weird things where my friends will be like, Hey man, like you're, you, that's fucking cool. You're killing. I'm like, yeah, well, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. And like onto another subject. Cause it's like almost uncomfortable sometimes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know like, what am I, mean? I really doing that? Yeah. It's crazy. But yeah. it sounds like, and it's important too, to, to note, like you've worked hard and surrounded yourself with creative people. Like you said earlier, like you'll just go downtown to LA and like try to like pick up the vibes and energy to inspire yourself. You're looking yeah. for inspiration actively because we all have those creative ruts and those down days and whatever, we're human. For sure. Um, but you've always surrounded yourself with creative people in the camp that you're in now. You've set yourself up to be in that situation, which is really important. And for people that want to, that are aspiring to do, again, whatever it is, music, business, an idea, a brand, anything like yep. surround yourself with those people that'll pick you up 100% that'll give you confidence that'll help you see things that you don't I used to and still sometimes do people will give me another perspective and I'm like are you in my head I'm like are you challenging me like is my idea mm. not the best one already yeah right why are you why are you trying to poke holes sure and I've really tried to it's learn funny. to be self-aware of like what they're doing is not challenging you what they're doing is saying what if this yeah right and if you go down that path the best possible thing will happen. Oh, 100%. Your idea is not the best one. It's not bulletproof. No. Maybe you built the foundation of a really solid idea, but let right. people in your in your team, you know, add on to that. And I think that's really important. And you've done a really good job at that and attracting the right people to yourself and you being, you know, attracting to people that is like, we want him in our in our crew. Dude, which is I, amazing. I, I'm, I, I'm convinced that like, okay, 
I mean, maybe I'll give myself a tiny bit of credit and maybe I've done something kind of cool here and there, but like, I'm convinced that most of the worst songs I've ever written were just written by me, right? <laughs> so like, and, and I think like, when it comes to the writing side of things, it's really interesting. I think Ross Golan from And The Writer Is, he, mm -hmm. he, he spoke about this at, at one point, but um, as a songwriter, when you're younger, you don't have the confidence. Mm -hmm. So when you go in the room, you think your ideas have to win mm -hmm. all the time. And you got to be putting output and you're nervous because you're not doing the output. No, yeah. everyone thinks I suck and blah, 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 yeah. blah. When you get older and you have more experience under your belt and you get a couple of wins maybe here and there or whatever, you learn that like a collaboration is fucking awesome. Because when you're younger, you think you got to do it all on your own. Yeah. But collaboration is amazing. You're going to get the best stuff out of collaboration. And then also you can divvy the work up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's that side Smart. of it too. Yeah. You, someone else can come up with great ideas too and can help the process. Yes. And also like, don't be so precious about ideas because your idea might inspire something in me yep. that'll lead us to the next idea. And that idea might go somewhere else. We might yeah. write five songs because of all the stuff that we're saying back exactly. and forth. So it's really like, um, yeah, I definitely, it's funny because I don't even think about that anymore. When I was, when I was in my like mid twenties, late twenties, all I thought about was that I had the nervousness going into writing sessions, just thinking like, oh my God, I have to come up with this thing. Yeah. Now I'm like, Hey, I started this idea. Like, Maybe it's a starting point. Maybe it's not. Yeah. Like maybe it's nothing. But like, here's just where my head was at today. And like, yep. you know, what were you thinking? And it's just so much easier because then the people around you can also um, express themselves in a real way. And I think the the whole thing about writing in particular or producing yeah. any of that side of stuff is like feeling comfortable enough to say something dumb in yeah. front of people that maybe yes. you don't even know. You just right. met five minutes ago. So like that that freedom to do that is so important. Yeah. You need to be able to come up with a terrible idea and say, hey, Mike, yeah. I think you should put a, you know, yeah. I don't know, a, a giant rhino on a drum kit. What do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, just like whatever. So um, the pressure that yeah. creatives put on themselves and business owners too, I do it all the time where I'm like, if there's an issue in the company or something that needs to be strategically planned out, I feel the pressure of like, yeah. I have to deliver the golden idea, the, of course. the, the, the thing that's going to fix it all. But it, have you gotten not. better at releasing that over the time? For sure. Yeah. yeah. The past couple of years, definitely like not going into the factory as much has really yeah. helped me. And just honestly, even as far as like a week ago, like just yeah. journaling and thinking of like, man, like I do, I have so much, I'm so tight all the time and like, mm. I can't ever let loose because sure. I'm like, I'm, oh, and it's like, life or death for like even a simple thing where yeah. I should just be like, my <laughs> team's know. great. Like, yo, Jason, like, yeah. I know you can come up with this. Like, here's a, uh, a thing and he will. He's like, here's the solution. I'm like, oh yeah. Like I didn't, I forgot that there's an app for that. Like I'm so trying to funny, like dude. develop my own technology here and there's an app that can do that. Like <laughs> the, the, you can't always see, you know, through the forest, of so course. to speak, you know, and like of course. the people around you can sure. sometimes. Sure. And you're right. That like spark of an idea just plop it in there and like someone else can do that too. And then you can add the collaborative thing I think is so special. And, yeah. um, the ego that we all have for sure. Um, ego is the enemy. There's a book, uh, by Ryan holiday, like a, he's very stoic writer. I read yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. That dude's and, awesome. Dude. Yeah. It's like ego is the enemy, man. And like, it'll kill collaboration and for it really sure. does. Cause you know, the energy suckers in a room Oh man, and it's hard to be around Ooh, them and dude. it's, that's tough. Yeah. But it's also hard as an individual to be like, well, my idea is the best one and like, it should be it, but it's not, you really have to check yourself at the door hundred percent and go in with that collaborative mind. Yeah. I mean, dude, look at the, one of the greatest, uh, periods in art history is the Renaissance. Yeah. And like, you know, I, I started reading the Da Vinci bio, Crazy. Uh, that Walter Isaacson did or some, uh, the cool. guy who did the, um, I think he did Bill Gates. I don't know. Yeah. Um, he, uh, uh, they were talking about just like how the paintings, like we all think it's just like Leonardo da Vinci and then they do like scans and they're like, yeah. no, he, first of all, he was part of a whole crew of guys doing paintings and they had almost like a factory. Yeah. It's kind of like the way this, the, the Swedish, uh, producers and writers started doing their thing. They yeah. just got a bunch of like really talented people amazing. and then everyone worked on each other's stuff and they came up with, you know, dude, I don't know, amazing. I kissed a girl or something like, you yeah. know, they came up with a, mas yeah, yeah, a pop masterpiece, a masterpiece or like, masterpiece, you know, yeah. since you've been gone or whatever. Seriously. So it's like, it's, it's like, we, we have to remember that kind of stuff. The stuff that we, we go, Oh my God, that's incredible. It's, it's priceless. Yeah. Like it might've not just been one person. It might've sure. been a, a bunch of different people. So yep. I, it's something to remember, I guess for, 
from yeah. both of us, you know. I love it, man. I appreciate your insight and sharing all these stories. I Hell hope yeah. I hope I definitely took a lot away. I love learning from people in the industry and creatives that I've looked up to. We have such like we've talked about so much history. It's crazy, dude. I've been a fan of yours and everything you've done for so long. I appreciate your time sharing these stories. Yeah, and man. Thank hopefully, you. Hopefully there's some key, you know, moments that people can take away and be inspired sure. by as well. Yeah. That's the whole thing, man, is like we're, you know, we're in this position in the music industry. Like you said, we're getting older and it's like, what little nuggets can we leave to the next generation of like- 100%. Hey, maybe don't do this. Maybe do it this other way or like this, you know, mindset shift that I had when I'm 38, yep. you know, I yep. should have maybe tried to have when I was a little bit younger, but sure. maybe I also just had to go through it. And exactly. there's so much of that. And, you know, I can't wait to catch up again in another yeah, five years and see where we're at. Side note, I just want to say congratulations. Thank and you. you're day one. You're the, you're the dude. Thank and, you, uh, you know, congratulations on everything. I appreciate it. And you it's guys, awesome. dude, you because know, side note, sorry to interrupt you, but, but just for anyone who's wondering, like when you say you want to start a drum company, it's kind of a crazy idea. It's like, it's, it's in, it's insane that like, d dude, that's like saying like, I, I'm going to start the next Apple. It literally, it's very hard to, oh to start these business. Like it's hard to get something off the ground. And at the time there were many drum companies that took up a large market share for sure. You know, so you got to understand that like <laughs> Mike's like done something pretty remarkable here. I mean, I know people do and I, I know you do, that, but I'm just, I, we've never talked about this uh, maybe, yeah. maybe once or twice, but I just want to say congrats. Dude, that means a lot. It's pretty amazing. Not many people get to do what you've done. Oh, so sure. it's, it's incredible. I feel like a kid in a candy store sometimes, like yeah. when I go to the factory and see people play our drums and I've always felt that. And it's always been such a drive for me to make not only, obviously I want to make great drums that sound great and can stand the test of time, but like, I want to make something that has a vibe and yeah. has energy and sure. has people, people feel included. Yeah. You know, yeah, I looked sure. at all the other Trump companies when I was a kid and I was inspired by them, the players that they had, the stuff that they were doing. And I never felt like I could be included in that. And having young kids buy our drums and spend their money or their parents supporting them and buy them gear yeah. and at BSJC and s see them and hear them be like, dude, like you changed my life. It's like a product that I built. It's so cool. It's so cool. And I will never take that for granted. That is one thing that I'll never take for granted. And that's the fire for me yeah. that keeps me going through all the trials and tribulations of running a business because it's a business. There's people, there's things that yeah. you don't see on social media that fall on my shoulders and oh, it's for sure. very difficult 23 years in and i'm still like starting a drum company was a pretty crazy idea dude <laughs> and i never meant to do it but it was it was That's dudes crazy. like you and justin and bands crazy. in our little new england scene that believed in what we were doing it was like I'll come to grandma's basement and like pick up a kit like sure dude dude i totally forgot about that by the way crazy we delivered Justin's that is so kit. Funny, dude. He came to the factory a couple times, but we delivered his kit to his house. I, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. And you guys were there, and he like he wrote me a check for the balance. And my brother was like, "Wait, what is that? Like that could bounce." And I'm like, <laughs> "I we know where the dude lives, man. Like I don't know. Like I don't You're think literally gonna, at his mom's house. I don't house think right he's now. gonna steal the drums from us. But like, should I like go try and get cash from him? Like we're just figuring it out, dude. But like that's so funny. You guys believed in us and like made me. You so talk about sick. confidence, like. I was so scared, dude. Like, oh, I can only imagine. Streetlight Manifesto playing SJC. The Aquabats playing SJC. Kurt Ballou had us build nice. drums for God City Studios. And then Ben Kohler dude. from Converge is coming to get drums. Like, I was so, so cool. Out of I'm my getting element, goosebumps, dude. But also, like, yo, like, okay, you're coming to my factory. Sweet. And just the world that we're a part of is really cool to look back on and share these oh stories. Yeah. And it's all about supporting the collaborative environment. Sure. So yeah, I appreciate you saying that. Man. Yeah, it man. really does mean a lot. You've been there from the get go and like Crazy. truly helped inspire and motivate me through the whole thing. So oh, hell yeah. It's an honor to be on the ride, man. Heck yeah. yeah. Well, dude, you know, loyal to the craft is all about talking about what makes you loyal and to, to what you do. And obviously everything that makes you tick and follow your pursuit in that journey and uh, we've learned a lot about you, and I Hell really yeah. appreciate your time and opening up your playbook and sharing Dude, these things with us. So you're thank the man. you. Thanks, bro. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. Hell yeah. Thank you.